right now what has happened, what's happening now, and what's coming. All right, Chris, so we've had these clusters of storms, as you know, that have been developing and rolling along. We're going to see another one develop, and today's threat is going to be a little further south than we've seen. Yesterday's big batch of storms, yesterday's derecho, we'll talk about if indeed it was a derecho. We're going to have a good conversation about that about 10 minutes away, but that's offshore. We're also going to be tracking what happened last night and still going on this morning, still bringing rain into Tennessee, Kentucky, and into North Carolina, too. Plus, we've got our next round going on right now across portions of Kansas. This rain that we're dealing with in parts of Kentucky, but especially in northeastern Tennessee right now, moving into North Carolina, Charlotte getting a couple of showers, the steadier rain around Asheville at the moment. Luckily, those uh, areas have weakened when it comes to storms. This area now just south of Knoxville has not. These storms still holding together, and there is a severe thunderstorm warning for Townsend County until 1045 local time. Damaging winds have been the main threat with storms over the last two days and remain that threat again uh, this morning. All right, spatches of lightning out here as well, again, south and east of Knoxville, also near Crossville, just north and east of there, you are dealing with that. Next round of storms in Kansas. Let's go to that right around Emporia East of there and south of there. These counties under a severe thunderstorm warning. Bourbon and Crawford includes Baker, Fort Scott and Pittsburgh and Chris. Um, this, I think, is just the beginning of more of what we're going to see today. In the evening, there were some uh, signs of it. Was it or was it not a derecho is the... Uh the challenge right now. The yeah, and, I, and, and certainly if you if you look at everything we have here, this certainly started as one. It's in a climatological area that we would see one. The length uh, is almost four times as long as you'd need to, to verify for a derecho. And you, you know what's really weird is to kind of pick these out. Um, well, okay, but, but before we had the storm reports on there, you could kind of mm -hmm. see how they pulse yeah. up and down, up and you just get these waves of, there it is right there, and you can see how they just kind of wave. Very classic appearance. It, yeah, very classic appearance, kind of working its way through. We had over 400 reports of, uh, of wind and damage in through here. Uh, but one of the criteria in the, in the definition is uh, several widespread gusts, and here it is right in through here, several mm -hmm. meaning three or more as defined of 75 miles per hour or greater. All right, so let's see if we actually had that. So we took all the wind reports and had to go through these this morning, and we looked in and saw what we had. And the wind reports that we had uh, up in Minnesota, which is where this started, any 75 at all, mm -hmm. but we had a couple of 74 miles per hour. So by that definition, no, but in terms of all the characteristics everything and else. you don't have anemometers in everyone's backyard well, you're right you're right it's, what, isn't what, it reasonable to assume did we have a 75 before after the 74 right, right, that right. wasn't bigger gaps too i mean if we're sticking to this criteria of 75 plus there's there's a pretty large gap there's gaps where there's, there's not huge, even close. there's huge gaps yeah. but all but really all the definition says is is several widespread reports of 75 or more and that that's it we're, we're, we're nitpicking very, very, very a little bit. Yeah. Either but, way, guys. Either, regardless. Lots yes. of wind damage. Everybody and reporting flooding. Yeah. damage. Flooding, of course, on the tail end of these yeah. things as they kind of stall out. And we've seen, you know, repeated convection in so many of these places across Indiana and Kentucky. And we're seeing... Indiana. And just the length of time that we were tracking this. I mean, this, this was Sunday night. You know where this is right now? If you look at the current radar... Off the still, coast? Yeah, a piece of this off, still the, there. off yeah. the south. From coast. Sunday. Right, yeah. right, from Sunday. So, yeah, when you with big thunderstorm complex like this, oh, this is great. You can see where this thing is this morning uh, heading off the coast. They can just hold together for days. And they're their own weather systems. Yeah. They become their own weather systems. So it's like a, a, a thunderstorm and a squall line that's really on steroids here. And that's a classic example of what we had. You know, we, we have climatology. We know that this is an area, you know, that maybe once every two years see something yeah, like this. Uh, yeah, you know what? Um, let's go ahead and pop the climatology graphic up there. That'd be awesome yeah. to look at that and see where we've got it. This, of course, tells us, you know, the orange one every two years, four every th So this is out. But this area in through here that we're looking mm -hmm. uh, pretty much runs the gamut, right, mm -hmm. in terms of what we had. And you remember early in the year, we had that little derecho that moved right in through here, right across yeah. the Great Lakes. So that's climatologically right where we would expect it. Certainly. We're right. dealing with very small details here. From for Cracker, all intents and purposes, it was. Thank you. I mean, that, that video was just unbelievable. Did you see the cars that were strewn about? Did you see the roof floating down through the water? Um, big problems with the rainfall that we've had. Here are some of the last 24-hour totals, and you go to around the Louisville area and up into southern Indiana, nearly five inches. We had more than five inches, actually um, not too far away from Charleston, West Virginia, and here in eastern Kentucky, easily widespread spots uh, of two to three inches, some locally higher amounts. Now, we are looking at some very heavy rain right now uh, that is moving with thunderstorms just to the south of the Knoxville area. We got some steady rain into western North Carolina, including around the Asheville area, and certainly 
certainly anywhere that you have any uh, mountainous terrain, any hills, that's going to exacerbate any flood issues because that water can uh, can move pretty fast. All right, a couple of thunderstorms now popping in London, Kentucky, and in the vicinity where we're still under a flash flood warning until 2 o'clock this afternoon. In general, we're getting some relief from the heavy rainfall, but you can see there's still a few showers left, and the concern is that we will get some additional rainfall later today, so flood watches are up. Let's show you what's going on here with our pattern. Again, we've got uh, that one batch of storms on its way. It's going to be tracking into the Carolinas later today. Another batch that we're going to be watching as well. And uh, there's a, you know, another little disturbance that's going to eventually pop thunderstorms up here in portions of Ohio. Concern is that West Virginia and Kentucky also will get some of that. And Chris, we could see additional flooding through this area. I'll be right back. We're going to go in there. Pretty cool deal. All right, thanks for staying with us on Weather Center Live. I'm Jen Carfagno. And I'm Chris Warren. We're keeping an eye on that severe weather threat that we have right now, especially after what we have seen from yesterday and early this morning, the aftermath mm -hmm. of a big squall line, derecho that came from the upper Midwest west, and now is offshore in the southeast. That's tremendous. That tracks Sunday night to still this morning. We're tracking that thing offshore, and now we've got two more active areas to talk about. So let me walk over and show you what's happening on our weather maps right now. We've got our next round setting up and taking shape in eastern portions of Kansas. We've got what's going on for us right now from the overnight storm still left and holding together and holding its own in Tennessee. And then this was yesterday's main event that actually started Sunday night. That is offshore uh, only affecting boats, but a it's interesting nonetheless that we're still tracking that thing. But let's go into what's impacting you this morning. Right around the Knoxville area right now, we're sort of getting the worst of the weather. We've got both a severe thunderstorm warning just west of town and also a flash flood warning in town because storms are training. It's uh, the National Weather Service expecting flash flooding to happen because of the way these storms are moving right on top of each other, bringing with them some very heavy rain, not to mention the concern from some damaging winds. Morgan and Roan under flat or under severe thunderstorm warning until 11 o'clock local time and then of course, we have uh, also uh, looking at that again, that flash flood warning too. All right, so Knoxville, this is what it looks like outside right now. We take a look at I-40 around Knoxville. Very wet. Lights are on, as you would expect, Chris. Um, the rain is steady, and you can see some flashes of lightning every once in a while from this perspective. So a uh, tough drive. A lot of, usually a lot of trucks through here, Chris, so we'll see how traffic